Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should hit subscribe before you realise how fucking garbage the content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to seek some help so you can get away from the addiction to absolute fucking rubbish. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Today you are here for a Gravekeeper's deck profile. For the most part, relatively budget friendly. There are some options that are less budget friendly, but we can talk about those as we get into the video. The idea here is just to stun our opponents so that they can't play. And believe you me, this does work quite well when it works out well. It is a little bit inconsistent, which can be the cause of some of the issues, making it a much better option for the likes of locals if you still have access to those. Definitely some fun for online. Probably not something you want to take to the likes of a YCS, unless you're a brave brave soul. If you do enjoy the profile and you'd like to consider picking up some of the cards that are used in here, or maybe you just want to pick up singles in general, or even some Pokemon singles in general, you can check out the channel sponsors in the description, Jam Jam Cards UK. There's a link there for a nice cheeky discount on their eBay store. But that is enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the video. So in all honesty, I think much of this deck profile is pretty self-explanatory. Anyone that's played the deck before will have an idea of exactly what we're trying to do here. But ultimately, the idea is just to stun our opponent. There are many options in here you could change, especially for more budget-friendly options, if that's something that you wanted to do. This is just a version that I've put together, but again, it can be incredibly budget-friendly if you want to omit some of the cards here. In particular, we're looking at Extravagance and Impermanence and some of the extra deck targets. But again, for the most part, relatively budget-friendly and can definitely be tweaked with that in mind. Let me also apologise before we get started. If you do hear a loud noise in the background, that is probably the fans on my laptop, which go incredibly loud. Sounds like a fucking jet engine. If that's what you hear, that's exactly what it is. My apologies. Hopefully we can edit that out in the audio. But anyway, enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. So we start off with triple copies of Gravekeeper's Command. And this is three more ways to get to Necro Valley, which is basically the aim of the deck, right? You switch off your opponent's graveyard. We have triple copies of Spiritualist because the fusion is actually fucking insane. Normally, if you can set the fusion up with one or two protection layers or one or two other ways to stun, you've won. You have won at that stage. Um, and this, this card really enables you to do that. This is definitely one of the best bits of support that have been printed in a while. Definitely something you should be maxing out on. We have double copies of Descendant for a bit of spot removal. A nice cool card to get out and just pop a bunch of cards on your opponent's side of the field. Double copies of Recruiter. This is now far more budget friendly than it was before. When I first started playing Gravekeepers a couple of years ago. So some of these cards were incredibly hard to get out of. Incredibly expensive. But it's a card that you should definitely be running. And I think two is absolutely fine. Two copies of Headman in here. This is going to help you facilitate some of your plays. Normally you're going to summon this, get your Spiritualist out of the grave, and go into your fusion from there. And then two copies is perfectly fine. You really don't need to be running more than that. We have a single copy of Artifact Scythe here, because we probably don't really want to see it in our hand. If Necro Valley's on the field and it gets popped and goes to the grave, you're pretty much fucked. Um, so you want to be searching this off the trap, ideally. You could double up on this so that you've got the ability that if you do hard draw it, you've got another target. But honestly, if we treated all garnets like that, our decks would just be full of bricks. So just run the one copy and hope for the best. We move on to some hand traps here. Again, you've got some different options you could consider. Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring is now incredibly budget friendly, but also the most diverse of the hand traps. So I think you need to play it at three in pretty much any deck that you can. We've got triple copies of Nibiru because it does, it just wins games if your opponent isn't wise to it. And getting their stuff into the grave is normally a bad position for them. And on that note of hand traps, we'll skip over to infinite impermanence whilst we're here. This is your other option. Again, you can cut this out for the likes of Valor and stuff like that. But Imperm's just that little bit better, as we all know. Being able to go second and having a, a line of play to go in whilst it's still in your turn. Being able to set it and switch off back row. Your opponent is normally a fucking idiot and will play stuff in the middle column as well, so that normally fucks them as well. So just loads of niche scenarios that we all know that Infinite Impermanence is a good option. But again, you can substitute it for other hand traps if you prefer. Going back to the rest of the deck profile though, triple copies of Necro Valley Throne. One of the big issues on this deck is that it relies so heavily on the normal summons. So having that option for another normal summon does come up quite a lot. The fact that it is also a rotor for the deck as well is something that you should definitely be running three of for that reason alone. 
We have a single copy of Gravekeeper Steel. This is just for adding stuff back. This is quite nice to be able to do your fusion and then add those resources straight back so that you know you've got an option for the next turn if you need to go into a second copy of Spiritualist. We have a single copy of Hidden Temples here. Unfortunately, like many of the Gravekeeper cards, and that is why a lot of them don't get in, they do rely on Necro Valley being on the field to even activate in the first place. That is something we don't really want to get into too much, but this is incredibly powerful, and if you can resolve it and you can keep a way to protect it on the field, you're in a really, really good position. I only run the one copy for that reason. It is also searchable as well. You really don't want to see it very much in your opening hand you want to see it when you get an opportunity to search into it when you've already established a bit more of an unbreakable presence and then onto our field spell goodness here we've got triple copies of necro valley because it's necro valley that's exactly why we're here anyway we also have a single copy of mystic mind because i like free game ones a lot of people don't main ways to out this in their deck apart from you know monster bits of spot removal like of phoenix and stuff and well they can't resolve it if you don't want them to as long as this is available in the game and you're playing a deck that can play field spells or has access to this card, you should be fucking playing it. I'm not going to tell you again. I don't care how much people don't like it. You're playing a fucking stun deck, my man. Don't get too upset about playing a floodgate. Let's play one more and let's win those free game ones. At the end of the day, we don't remember how you won. We remember that you fucking won. Now, continuing with that in mind, we have terraforming and set rotation. These are just additional ways to get into your field spells. Again, pretty self-explanatory. We have triple copies of extravagance in here because the additional draw power is very good for this deck. It is a little bit slow. It's not too bad because if you can stun your opponent enough, you can wait those extra turns. But being able to see those resources quicker is just always a better option. Again, if you really wanted to, there are other options you could use out there. You could use duality. You could use desires if you prefer. You can run a lure of darkness as an option. Personally, though, I think extravagance is probably the best option considering really the only extra deck card that we really care about is the Gravekeeper Fusion. The others are pretty much optional. We have a single copy of Double or Nothing. This is the best feeling in the world when you go Mystic Mine, you wait like 10 turns, your opponent can't do anything, and then you go get rid of it with Necro Valley, Double or Nothing, attack the game. It, it feels fucking good, trust me. You could double up on this, no pun intended, if you wanted a second copy in there so you can make sure that you can resolve it. It's a nice way of doing things, but again, I think the deck is slow enough and has enough bricks in here that sort of omitting that second copy is just a necessity to keep things a little bit more trim. And then onto our trap line up here. So we have a single copy of Temple here. This is just going to help you regenerate and keep Necro Valley on the field. It's also going to help you give a bit of a distance between yours and your opponent's attack power, which can come up quite a lot of the time. Again, just a really good option. I think as a one-off, it's perfectly fine. We're running triple copies of Sanctum in here. This is obviously to search Scythe, but can also double up as back row removal, especially if you start setting loads and your opponent sides in a bunch of removal, they can start popping these cards and it puts them in a really bad position if they're not careful. We run triple copies of Solemn Judgment. Again, for game one, this is really important, especially if you go first. Setting this is just such a free way to switch off your opponent's cards. I love Solemn Judgment. Every time I ever run it, I just want even more fucking copies. And when I don't have it, I do really miss it. I think a mandatory three of, at least in my opinion. And again, Infinite Impermanence we covered a little bit earlier. As a quick note, before we continue, we don't have anything about the side deck here. Honestly, the side deck is just one of those things that you should be adjusting depending on what you're playing against. If you're going to the locals and that kind of thing, you want to be able to do that. If you're doing some remote duels, of course, you'll want to play with what you have available to you. Or if you're using online sims, then of course you have whatever you have access to. But anyway, I digress. Let's get stuck into the extra deck. So again, a good chunk of this is just about what options you could consider. These are just the ones that I've put in here. But again, depending on if you choose to go the extravagance route or go for others, you can swap out for some other utility cards. But really, the main one you're going to be making is Supernaturalist. This is going to help you generate advantage and resources. If you activate its effect, you get it during the end phase, regardless of if it's on the field or not, which is always nice because if your opponent does find a way to act, let's say you're unlucky and they get rid of it with a, a trap card or something like that, it doesn't fucking matter. As long as you've activated it, you're going to be able to resolve that and you're going to be able to start setting up those stun pieces for further down the line. Again, a really awesome bit of kit. I really wish they'd release more of these kind of things. It's so, so cool. I'd love to see more support come out for the deck. We have the option for Quintet Magician. It comes up a lot less, but again, it is a really good option that you can go into. If you nuke your opponent's board and slap down a Necro Valley, you win the game. Pretty much like this thing with Necro Valley on the field and your opponent's got nothing. They're not likely to play through that. We've got Utopia and Utopia Double here. These are for the double or nothing. Again, you don't have to play this if you don't want to. You can also slap in Zeus if you've got access to that. Maybe you're a rich boy and you've got that. Just options that you can consider. And I wanted to include a Synchro in here that could benefit from there being a field spell. So having this in here is a good one. Obviously, Ancient Fairy Dragon would be the ideal. But Ancient Pixie Dragon does some cool bits and bobs as well. Being able to draw cards is something that you want to be able to do in this deck. This gives you the ability to do just that. 
And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you've made it this far, you either enjoy it enough to if it's subscribe already, or you fucking hated it and couldn't possibly look away. Either way, hit that big goddamn red button. This isn't the only kind of video we do on the channel, although we are doing a slew of deck profiles at the moment. There are the likes of how to play videos, other deck profiles of course, combo tutorials and all that good stuff. If there's anything you would like to see covered on the channel, definitely head out there and let me know. You can find me on Facebook and all other good social media. Nice and easy to get hold of, and I also read all of the comments. So definitely drop down in there what you think below. But again, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. Hopefully you have hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.